A New World Next Week. I'm James Corbett of CorbettReport.com. And I'm James Evan Pilato of MediaMonarchy.com. 65 million Americans should threaten to not pay taxes. We've got that story. But first, we referenced the Investigatory Powers Act last week on New World Next Week when we were talking about Rule 41 and the NDAA. But, of course, the state is the gift that keeps on giving, at least in terms of chances to see their utter criminality written out in black and white via the register out of the U.K., Snooper's charter allows the state to lie in court. Blighty's freshly passed Investigatory Powers Act, better known as the Snooper's Charter, gives virtually unrestricted powers not only to state spy organizations, but also to the cops and a host of other government agencies. The operation of the oversight and accountability mechanisms in the IPA are all kept firmly out of sight, and so its authors hope, out of mind, of the public. It is up to the state to volunteer the truth to its victims if the state thinks it's abused its secret powers, kind of like grading your own homework. However, despite the establishment of a parallel system of secret justice, the IPA's tentacles also enshrine parallel construction into law. That is, the practice where prosecutors lie about the origins of evidence to judges and juries, thereby, of course, depriving the defendant of a fair trial because he can't review or question the truth of the evidence against him. So this is the Snoopers Charter in the UK, but I think a good parallel example is we've been trying to kind of illustrate the similarities between Rule 41 or the NDAA or all this cyber spying. A good example of how that works here in the states of parallel construction is basically how the NSA gives their stolen info to their buddies at the DEA. So, of course, they can bust their competition in the drug war. James, they don't call it a new world order for nothing. Like I said last week, we pretty much see all of these laws roll out at the same time. We certainly do, and we see that in a number of different ways. The EU Parliament passes their anti-Russian propaganda law just as the U.S. is putting out their law to crack down on anything that they deem to be propaganda. So um, on that note, I hope people will go to the register and take a look at that sidebar on this article about parallel construction where it mentions that NSA DEA link up and how they use that. They spy on you illegally, and but they can't use that in court, so they tell the DEA, hey guys, bust this guy, the DEA busts you, and then the DEA can go forward with the prosecution, and they never have to mention where this information illegally came from. Now, the point why this is something that is anathema to any system of true justice is because that makes the NSA, the people with that pow- those, those powers, gods for all intents and purposes. They decide who gets cracked down on and who doesn't, who gets through the system and who doesn't at any time for any reason. And you have to, I guess, just implicitly trust that anyone and everyone at the NSA are angels, complete perfect angels floating on clouds who have no, nothing in their minds except pure justice. And they will tell everyone every every time they have uh, information about a drug bust or something. No, of course not. It's when this guy, oh, he didn't pay his cut. Or this guy, we want to take him out of the picture. He's getting a bit uppity. Let's let's pass this on to the DEA, and they could bust them, and it, they'll never know. They'll never know where it came from. Plus, of course, oh yeah, by the way, they're collecting this data illegally. So this is why this is just absolutely ludicrous, ridiculous, a total, utter inversion of justice. Not that we should be surprised that this is happening, not just in the United States, but everywhere around the world, presumably. But uh, I think people need to be outraged about this, uh, the, the, the idea that they are now enshrining this in law. They're putting it in black and white. Go read the text and realize what they're telling you. They are telling you, yes, we can and will lie to your face in court about what, what we're doing and how we're collecting this data and what, what data we really have. And that is making the people with access to that data, the people sitting there at the trunk of the internet listening to everything you do, making them into gods in this system of injustice. And I think even the register says, you know, it, never before in British law has something like this actually been ensconced or enshrined. So as we continue on our episode 292 of New World Next Week, we move to more lies and fraud. As the Pentagon buried a study exposing $125 billion in waste, this via the horse's mouth at Military.com, senior defense officials suppressed a study documenting $125 billion worth of administrative waste at the Pentagon out of fears 
that Congress would use its findings to cut the defense budget. The report, which was issued in January 2015 by the advisory Defense Business Board, called for a series of reforms that would have saved the department of $125 billion over the next five years. Among its other findings, the report showed that the Defense Department was paying just over a million contractors, civilian employees, and uniformed personnel to fill back office jobs. That number nearly matches the amount of active duty troops, 1.3 million, which is the lowest since 1940. The Bezos Post reported that some Pentagon leaders feared the study's findings would undermine their claims that years of budget sequestration had left the military short of money. So in response, they imposed security restrictions on information used in the study. That kind of seems like a callback in, in a way to our first story. We lie about how we get the information and then it can just go down the memory hole and say it's, you know, the rubric of national security. So in response, they imposed security restrictions on information used in the study and even pulled a summary report from the Pentagon website. Now, James, I do find 1940 being an interesting year to note, especially since we just passed Pearl Harbor Day. That, of course, the PR event to give Americans World War II fever as the war machine continues to roll on. James? Unfortunately so. And uh, again, uh, for people who know about the trillions that the Pentagon hasn't been able to account for over the last, uh, well, going on like 20 years now or whatever it is, 10, yeah, almost 20 years. Um, and added to that, the fact that they haven't balanced the budget in decades, the fact that they uh, keep putting back this data, this magical data, which they're going to have their databases in place so they can actually account for the money they're spending. All of this goes to show it is just one giant boondoggle. And as one report put it a few years ago, talking about the missing trillions, they said you could look under a couch cushion in the Pentagon and find $50 billion. So uh, uh, th again, this shouldn't be surprising, but it should absolutely undermine this ridiculous talk about, oh, we're not spending enough on the military. And again, go look at DonaldJTrump.com or whatever the website is and look under national defense and look at the fact we have to spend more money on the military. It's, it's underfunded. What nonsense. What total poppycock. And uh, this, is, this is cronyism. This is absolutely the heart of the beast of cronyism. And it just doesn't get more ridiculous than this. So next time they say they need, oh, they need more money at the Pentagon. Oh, we're sorry, guys. We're going to have to raise your taxes a little bit. We need more money for the war machine. It, not only is that not true because you don't need to fund the war machine, but it's also not true because they already have the money. It is a ridiculous lie, and it needs to be opposed vociferously before this becomes ensconced. Oh, the, the Pentagon's underfunded. The Pentagon's underfunded. Total nonsense. So two related to tie into this, I think, to sort of help further expose the fraud of all of this. Climate change will stir unimaginable refugee crisis, says the greatest refugee manufacturing machine ever known, that being the military. And I think climate change in this case is sort of their euphemism for killing people so we can get to Russia and China. The other story, James, and I, you were kind of knocking on the door right there, that Air Force One is just the tip of the Boeing bank iceberg. So, as you noted, America's next top president, people think he's going to go against the war state. I imagine this sort of Boeing talk is going to be another Coke versus Pepsi choice, and they'll throw those Boeing bums out, and we can get the fine folks at Lockheed to take over. So, our third and final story this week has a Time Magazine op-ed saying that unless they get the ruler they asked for, 65 million Americans should threaten to not pay taxes. This via Mark Weston, the author of a book called The Runner-Up Presidency. Until democracy is, dis is restored. It was hard to even say it. <laughs> the approximately 65 million Democrats who voted for Hillary Clinton should pledge that in the future, if a Republican wins the presidency with fewer votes than a Democrat for the third time in our era, we won't pay taxes to the federal government. No taxation without representation, even with an exclamation mark. He goes on to ask, is signing a pledge to not pay taxes legal? Yes, if no overt act of conspiracy involved in the pledge itself was hypothetical. No one knows when or if it would be carried out. He goes on to say how great places like moveon.org could help. And I looked up op-ed author Mark Weston a little. I didn't find anything immediately nefarious like him being listed on Council on Foreign Relations. But he basically comes from an Ivy League media family. He's got close ties to the Saudis. And he wrote a play called Meet George Orwell. 
James, is this our good news for the week, getting people to think about not paying taxes? In an ideal world, yes, it would be the uh, the good news, because in an ideal world, people would apply this, again, rigorously and logically and across the board. Hey, wait, so every time there was a president that I didn't vote for in office, I don't have to pay taxes? Is that... The, uh, the the logical principle we're going to apply? Okay, fair enough. Well, hey, I don't vote. I don't pay taxes. <laughs> and this should be applied across the board. I certainly hope so. So I hope it catches on. And of course, you know, I, I, I can imagine that when uh, the Democratic Party gets back into power and if their president is elected without winning the popular vote, for some reason, this wouldn't apply to their side of the, the coin. They'd, they'd say, no, you Republicans, you have to pay. But it's only when, you know, the Democrats are out of power that this applies, I'm sure. Just more ridiculous. Um, it's just ridiculous. And the, the hypocrisy is the galling part of all of this. So taxation is some horrible, evil thing when it's their guy in power. But it's, you know, wonderful and saint sunshine and rainbows and lollipops when it's our guy in power. I just wish people would apply these principles more consistently. So yes, I hope more. I hope people do take this pledge. I hope they do, and I hope they follow through. I don't think they're going to. I don't think a single person, because especially on the left side of the aisle, oh my god, oh, government, oh, we need to worship government and pay them all our money. Oh. But, uh, you know, it would be nice if this actually did transpire. And I, actually, I think, his, I think Weston's kind of central argument is that this goes back to the Electoral College, which can look at as being pretty much a, a fraudulent system, that it's not a one-man, one-vote system. But just like, of course, we've seen with the memes, just we got to get to that. Pr if only we had the right ring bearer, right? We'll, we'll work it out. We get rid of the Electoral College, right? <laughs> right, yeah. No, this is all about, uh, that. well, he didn't win the popular vote, so we don't have to pay our taxes. I, I, it, yeah, well, I agree. You don't have to pay your taxes, so don't. <laughs> That wraps up this episode of New World Next Week. I've got a couple of other headlines that we are watching. Germany finally admits to hosting key U.S. drone base. Of course, file that under President Nobel Peace Prize. Pentagon admits to unbelievable amounts of child pornography on government computers. And finally, WikiLeaks, also the gift that keeps on giving, the Colbert Report, programmed by the Clinton Foundation. A great little email showing how many segments and interviews and sketches they did to push Clinton global initiative propaganda. So, in closing... Like our video editor Brock West says in his fantastic tweet showing how ABC News rigged that crime scene recently with fake police tape, you basically take your pick. Fake news from MSM or 100% open source people funded media such as this. James. James, thank you for three stories. We'll leave it there. Talk to you next week. All right, man. Take care. <laughs>